What's up everybody, it's Connor from T-Sport Line. Today we're gonna to be installing our DC power adapter on our Tesla Cybertruck. This kit is great for adding any accessory lighting or accessories you want added onto the front compartment of your Cybertruck. This kit allows you to switch on power via your infotainment system and turn on any pod lights, ditch lights, or accessories that you may have coming from the front. Kit contents are going to include a voltage regulator and a bracket for the voltage regulator, as well as four screws in the accommodating washers, a waterproof connector, and two solder joints are included in the kit. Tools needed are going to be a 7mm socket and a 13mm socket with the accommodating socket wrenches, a trim tool, some wire strippers, and a heat gun or hair dryer are useful. First step here is we're going to take off this cowl cover. Now I've already done that. Basically just pop it right out. Next step is to remove these bumpers on either side. There's one on the driver's side. And it's basically just a, a quarter turn and it slides right out. Same thing on the passenger side, quarter turn, but this one turns the opposite direction. And we pop right out. Next, we're gonna remove the cover off of our washer fluid tank. Set that aside. And finally, we're gonna expose the bolts that have, hold the cover in. So using a small pry tool, maybe a screwdriver, there's a cover panel on either side of your frunk. So use this pry tool, take this cover off. That's gonna expose the two bolts on either side, four total. Next, we're gonna remove those four bolts that are holding the frunk down. And the last step is to remove two of the same bolts uh, that are on the back side of the frunk, one right here and the other here. So come in, same 11 millimeter socket. Pop that screw out. and same thing on that side. With all those bolts out, this frunk is ready to lift out. It simply just pops right off. The only thing that we need to be careful of is, as we're popping out is there is a connector on the back side of this button here. You wanna make sure you disconnect here and that releases the entire frunk to come out. Okay, got it off. Now I can pull this all the way out and set it to the side. Okay, first we're gonna take our red and black wires. We'll strip off the ends of them to expose the wire underneath the insulation. Next, bring our connector up to the wires from the truck. We're gonna line up the red wire from the connector with the red and blue wire from the truck, and the black wire from the connector with the black and blue wire from the truck. We're also gonna use these heat shrink solder joints to connect the two together. To do this, slide the heat shrink solder joint over the wire, push the two wires together until the inner copper colored and silver color ends of the wires pass each other. Next, we want to align the solder joint within the splice connector over the exposed wire so that when we heat this wire up, that solder is actually going to melt into the exposed wire itself and create a soldered joint. Now we'll bring our heat gun in and we're going to have to get this pretty warm. What we want to do is watch until the solder joint in the middle actually melts and flows into the exposed wire. It's really important that we get this hot enough that the solder fully melts and wicks into the exposed wire. This could take a minute or two to do. Watch carefully and wait until the solder actually flows into the wire. At first, the solder will start to soften. You'll see it change shape a bit. Keep going until the solder flows into the wire. Once the solder is fully softened, we'll move our heat guns to either side of the heat shrink connector. We wanna shrink both ends. So you'll see that there's a small red strip within the heat shrink end. That's actually gonna seal off the wire, wire and make this a weatherproof connection to the wire insulation. So make sure you get the full length of the connector hot so that it shrinks all the way down. Next, we're gonna move on to the negative side. So again, we'll take the black and blue wire from the vehicle and the black wire from our connector. So just like before, heat up the joint. We're gonna have to apply quite a bit of heat until the solder fully melts and wicks into the wires and creates that strong joint. Then heat up either end of the heat shrink connector 
so that it seals off. Now that we have our front plastics out, we're gonna go ahead and set up our voltage controller on our bracket. So the voltage controller is going to go in this orientation with the tab being towards the front of the vehicle and the wires pointing towards the center of your front area. So we're gonna flip it over and take our little small bolts and just get those guys started in here. We're not gonna tighten anything down until all four of them are started to help making sure everything's aligned. And then we will tighten everything down with our seven millimeter socket. And these don't have to be super tight. The lock washers will keep them in place. They just need to be snug down. Just like that, our bracket is assembled and ready to go in the car. Next, we're gonna grab our waterproof connection and we're gonna hook this up to our front power port. So I've got my trim tool here and we're going to pop these two clips right here. We're just gonna pull those up out of the way so that we can pull our wiring harness up and give us a little bit more room to access our mounting position for our voltage regulator. So we got this up out of the way and we're going to grab our 13 millimeter socket and wrench and remove this bolt right here. We're not actually going to remove it. We're just going to crack it loose and back it out a little bit. Our bracket is slotted and will slot on top of that. Additionally, you will have received a rubber pad in your kit that will go on this little circle cylinder tab here. We'll put that on top. That just helps our bracket from rattling around. Then we'll take it slotted over that bolt. I like to tuck my wiring harness back down, not into place fully, but just kind of enough to be able to position our voltage regulator and then grab my socket. And we will tighten this back down fully. So now that we have our voltage regulator mounted, you're going to take the red and black leads coming out of that with the male connector, and you're gonna plug that into the connector we just put on the car side. And once that snaps into place, you are all ready to plug in whatever ditch lights or accessory pods that you want to run. This regulator is only rated for 350 watts. So whatever accessories you do plug into this voltage regulator do need to be within that 350 watt limit. So your kit will include a couple of these connector covers here. If you're not going to be plugging anything into your connectors, you'll just take one of these covers and slot it on over until you hear that click. And that will just keep any dust and debris from getting in there until you decide to use this connector. That's going to wrap it up for our install today. If you like what you see, do leave a comment down below. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.